Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about special types of factoring. First, let's look at the difference of two squares. Remember the word difference means to subtract, so we're subtracting two squares. These are easy to identify because it's two terms, the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. It'll always be in the format a squared minus b squared, and these always factor to a minus b times a plus b. Now keep in mind the sum of two squares, a squared plus b squared, can't be factored using real numbers. So don't fall for that trick. Look for a difference or subtraction of two terms where each term is something squared. Let's look at example one, z squared minus 100. Well, we know that z squared is something squared right? It's z squared. Now what about 100? Is 100 something squared? Of course it is. 100 is the same as 10 squared. So here we really have z squared minus 10 squared. And if we use that formula above, we know that this factors to z minus 10 times z plus 10. And remember, you can always use the distributive property or FOIL to check your answer. How about example two? Well, we have an a squared and a b squared. Those are definitely things squared. What about the four and the nine? Well, four is the same as two squared, and nine is the same as three squared. So we technically have two squared times a squared minus three squared times b squared. And using our exponent properties, we know that this is the same as 2a squared minus 3b squared. So this follows that same format for the difference of two squares. So we can factor this to 2a minus 3b times 2a plus 3b. So that's how we factor the difference of two squares. Let's look at the second example of special types of factoring. With perfect square trinomials, notice that the first and the last terms are perfect squares, and that twice the product of their square roots equals the middle term, or that your first term is a squared your middle term is 2ab, and your last term is b squared. And then the sign of that middle term tells you the sign of your factor. Let's look at an example. Example 1, 9x squared plus 30x plus 25. 9x squared, we know that that is the same as 3x squared. And 25, our last term, is the same as 5 squared. So now we need to see, is that middle term, 30x, the same as our first term times our last term times 2? And it is. 2 times 3x times 5 is 30x. So this polynomial is a perfect square trinomial, and it factors to our first term, 3x, plus our last term, 5, that whole binomial squared. Let's look at another example. 25y squared minus 20yz plus 4z squared. Well, 25, as we just saw, is the same as 5 squared. So 25y squared is 5y all squared. And our last term, 4z squared, is the same as 2z squared. So we want to see is 2 times our first term, 5y, times our last term, 2z, the same as our middle term, 20yz. It sure is. 2 times 5 times 2 is 20, and y times z. 
So this is also a perfect square trinomial. But because that middle term has a negative sign, it factors like our second a minus b squared. So it's our first term, 5y, minus our second term, 2z, all squared. Let's look at another type of special factoring. These are called sum and difference of two cubes. Notice that the sum and difference of two cubes involves two terms, where each term is something cubed. And notice that both of these factor to a binomial and a trinomial. And the only difference between those factors are the signs in between each. Now there's a really easy way to remember the signs. Just remember SOAP. The first sign stays the same. That's why we have an S. So if we have a sum of cubes, the first sign is a sum. And if we have a difference, the first sign is a difference. S for same. The second is O, opposite. So the second sign in our trinomial is the opposite of our original sum or difference of cubes. And then the last term is always positive, AP. Let's look at the first example, m cubed minus 64 n cubed. Well, our first term is m cubed. And our second term, 64, is the same as a 4 times n, all cubed. So we have two terms that are both something cubed and a difference. So we have a difference of cubes, which follows that second equation. So our binomial is our first item, m minus our second, 4n. Remember, our sign has to stay the same. Then we have our first item squared plus our first times our second plus our second for n squared. Now we can expand these. Our binomial stays as m minus 4n, m squared plus 4n times m is 4mn. We like to keep our variables in alphabetical order. And then 4n, that whole thing squared, becomes 16n squared. So we just factored the difference of two cubes. Now let's look at factoring the sum of two cubes. Our first term is 8x cubed. 8 is the same as 2 cubed. So 8x cubed is 2x cubed plus 125y cubed. Well, 125 is the same as 5. So this is 5y cubed. Now our binomial is our first term, 2x, plus our second term, 5y. Then our trinomial is our first, 2x squared minus our first term, 2x times our second, 5y, plus our second term, 5y squared. Our binomial doesn't have anything to be simplified, so it stays as 5x plus y. Our trinomial, the first term, 2x squared, is 4x squared, because 2 squared is 4, and x squared is x squared. Our next term is minus 2 times 5, which is 10, x times y. And our last term, 5y squared, is 5 squared, 25, times y squared. Now we factored the sum 
of two cubes. Remember, sum and difference of cubes factor to a binomial and a trinomial, and you can remember the signs if you remember SOAP. Let's look at a couple more examples. Here we need to factor the expression completely. Remember our original rule, always look for a GCF? Let's do that here. So example one, is there a GCF? Yeah, the GCF is they both have an X and a Y in common. If we factor out X, Y, the first term becomes X squared. And the second term, y squared. Now look at that binomial that we got left with, x squared minus y squared. That's the difference of two squares. And we know the difference of two squares factors to x minus y times x plus y with our GCF in front. Now let's look at example two. Do we have a GCF here? Of course we do. All of these terms have the coefficient two in common, and they also have an M in common. If we factor out that GCF of two M, we're left with the trinomial M squared minus five M plus nine. Now we need to factor completely, so, Let's look at this trinomial that we have. Can we factor this? Well, let's see. We need two numbers, m times n, that give us nine, and at the same time, m plus n have to equal our middle term of negative five. Well, what are the factors of nine? We have one and nine, and we have three and three. Do either of those add to negative five? No, so that trinomial is prime, which means our final factored form is two m times m squared minus five m plus nine. We were able to factor out a GCF, but that's as far as we could go. That trinomial couldn't be factored anymore. Have a question or a factoring problem you want help with? Leave it in the comments and I'll include it in one of my next videos. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel for more math tutorials. Thanks for watching. See you next time.